Hey everybody, Go7, King of the Penguins here with a quick little tutorial video just talking about the interface of an Advanced Wars by Web game. And I'd like to start off with this top left corner looking at the zoom level. When you first start a game, it's going to be at times one for your very first game, that is. Otherwise, it's going to save it between games. And you can actually change this. So you can zoom out all the way down to 0.4 times, which makes this game board very, very small, but you can technically still play on it. Or you can zoom in to make it even, even bigger. And the more you do this, the more it's going to change the layout, as you saw right there, uh, pretty drastically right there. And it's going to max out at times 2.9, which is a very nice magnification if that's something that's very helpful for you. Uh, I would personally recommend going to a level that is large, but keeps this information panel over on the side so it's nice and accessible. Because these show you very important things. <laughs> to start off, it just shows you who's player one and players two. It's got my name here for Go7, so I'm player one because I'm on top. And then player two is Hapless Victim. And then it shows my country, so I am Cobalt Ice, which is dark blue, and that's going to correspond with the map here. You can see the buildings I own. And well, my opponent's White Nova, and they're like this pinkish color. And then it's also going to show the COs that you're playing with these little portraits. And if you mouse over them, it's going to show the little description of a day-to-day. -day. In this case, I'm playing Andy. It says no day-to-day -day abilities. Where my opponent's playing Lash. The units gain plus 10% attack for every terrain star. No air units are unaffected by terrain. And if you want more information on those COs, you can actually click on these portraits like so. And it's going to bring you right over to the CO chart. And now you can see what Andy's powers are and what they do, as well as, you know, go down and see Lash and all that stuff. Very, very helpful. And then right next to the portraits, we've got these dots. And this is just going to tell you whether or not the, the player is online. If it's a green dot, that means the player is online and looking at the game. If it's a yellow dot, it means they're online but not looking at the game. If it's a gray dot, it means they're not online at all. And if it's a red dot, it means they're on vacation. The dots kind of are buggy, so sometimes they're just going to straight up lie to you. I wouldn't really trust them, but that's what the colors mean. And then over here, we have your clock. In this case, it's reading 11 days, 15 hours, 45 minutes. And this is your total clock. There's there's two kinds of clocks we can see up here. There's a turn clock and a total clock. They're both deducting from the same pool, but the turn clock is the one that's usually going to tick down. Uh, if the turn clock runs out of time, it's going to end your turn or you'll lose the game. If you just run out of total clock... Um, Entirely, you'll you'll lose the game, and the turn clock's like deducting for your total clock. It's it's pretty simple. And then here we've got your money. There isn't a name for advanced wars by web currency, as far as I know. So I've got three thousand monies here, and then over here we've got very useful information, which at the start of the game is very simple. We have zero unit count. That's what this top one is. I have zero unit value. That's what the second one here is. My opponent's got one infantry, so that's a thousand unit value. And then the last here was like a, a building. This is your income. So this is saying 3,000. At the start of every turn, I would be getting 3,000 monies. And then below the, all of this information panel is this power bar. Each of these, each of these little uh, bars, you can see here it's, it's split up into six. Each of them is worth 9,000 value. You gain that value through combat. 50% uh, of the value you deal goes to your charge bar, and 100% of the value you take goes to the charge bar. And each of these is worth 9,000 to, to fill up. If you fill up all the smaller ones, then you'll be able to use your normal power. If you fill up the all, all six of them, you can use your superpower. Every time you use a power, the value requirement for each bar goes up by 20% to a max of 200%. And when you use a power, it just deducts the power cost. So if I had like four of these charged up and I use my normal power, it would just deduct the, the 27K and leave the rest behind. And then next we have up here this toolbar. In the far left, we have these like changing numbers. This is a coordinate system just telling me where my cursor is on the map. The left number is talking about the column I'm in, and the right number is talking about the row I'm in. So over here, I'm in the 16th column, ninth row. Very rarely are you going to end up using this. The only time is if you go into replay and you hit log, and then this will give you an action by action 
written out list that refers to the coordinate system for where things happened. It's not very often you're going to use that, but if you need to, that's how it works. And then we had the zoom level already. And the next we have the game menu where you can resign the game. You can set and offer a draw. You can go to this info panel, which will tell you the settings for the game. Most of the time, you're only going to be coming here to look at the capture limit because that's one of the win conditions. It says 28 capture limit. So if I had 28 income generating properties, I would win the game. Basically, if I was had a 28K income. And over here, you can see what units are banned and which units are under a lab. Uh, in this case, just the black bomb is banned, and that's pretty much always banned. And then next we have the view. This is just going to change how the map looks. You can make the buildings look like different Advanced Wars games buildings. You can turn the grid lines on and off. This is something that a lot of people have. I personally am not a huge fan, so I usually keep it off, but it can be very useful. And then below that, we have the stats. This is telling your kills to death and the, the value of your kills to death. This doesn't track injured units, only ones that have completely died. If two units join together, that's going to count as a death, but not a kill. So these can be unaligned. Very, very useful in fog because you don't have the information, the full information panels in fog. But in the standard, it's not utilized that much. And then next you have the pause timer here. You can see that I press it and this, this little notification shows up and it'll show up for my opponent as well. If we had both pressed the pause timer, the game would pause, which will stop my total time from ticking down. The turn timer will still tick down, but it will also be set to the seven day turn timer that is standard for league. If I was in like a custom game that had a one day turn timer and we both paused, it would then change to a seven day turn timer, which is good to know. And then next we have this little message panel. See here, I have sent a message to hapless victim, and it'll tell me the date, uh, the subject, and who it's from. I can send another one. I can be like, hi, hi. There you go, hapless victim. New subject, no subject. You don't need a subject line. Now you can see I can choose who to send my message to if there's more than one player. And a good thing to note is there's a little bit of a bug here. If I refresh this page, it will actually send the message again. Uh, that's something to keep aware of. Sometimes you're going to end up, you know, refreshing because you're looking for your opponent to respond and you want to uh, be ready for it. But just keep in mind, you, you might end up doubling your message. Instead, what you want to do is just go back to the game and you can refresh here like so. And then we can see a new message. So my opponent sent me a message. <laughs> Hapless victim said, I've got you this time. And there you go. So you'll just want to rely on that for when you're going to receive a message. Don't sit in there and refresh. And also all the messages that you send while you're in game and the game is ongoing is private. Other people can't see it. But as soon as the game ends, that becomes public information. And anyone that goes to like watch the replay will be able to see the messages sent. Just uh, something to keep in mind. And then next we have the damage calculator. And this is a handy little piece of technology. It's just going to tell you what the outcomes of fights are going to be. You can choose whichever CO you, you need, whichever unit you need, whatever terrain, how many comm towers, how many properties you have, how much money you have, the health of the unit, whether you have the normal power active, if you have the superpower active. Very, very handy for determining how battles are going to turn out. And it gives you these nice damage ranges. There's some hotkeys to keep in mind for this. If you hold down the A key or you hit select here, you can select a unit on the game board to fill the attacker role. And similarly, you can hold down the D key or the select to select something on the game board to fill this, which would make it very easy for reference. You can also press C to open and close this damage calculator like so. The uh, If you're on the mobile, these like select functions don't work out that great. So usually you'll just go through this manually to be like, oh, I'm a rocket in the woods, I'm attacking an infantry on the bridge and that kind of thing. And then next we have the move planner, which is just like a practice game board where you can do whatever you want here. You can move stuff wherever, it doesn't, doesn't matter. And when you're first starting out, I would definitely recommend using this mainly for calculating how uh, missile powers are going to land so that you can try and manipulate them. Like I move the infantry over here and now I hit something else. You can move this over here on like, oh, I need to, I'll build a missile so that a different thing gets hit. It's also you can like manipulate 
where the missiles are going to land, and it's very, very useful, and uh, also very easy to use for the move planner, because the move planner can be very daunting for newer players, but in that respect, it's a very useful tool and easy to use. And then next, we have the replay function here, and this lets you go action by action or turn by turn, and then you have a little drop down here that'll go to any turn you want. For right now, there hasn't been any, <laughs> any anything that's happened, but that's how this works. You just press these buttons. In standard, it doesn't use very much. In fog, you'll use it a lot. And next, we have these follow. You can to you can toggle follow to watch your own game. And now, as you can see, one person's following the game. That just means that whenever an action is made here, everyone that's following the game will have a little notification so they can come check out the new board state. And then over here, we have the number of viewers, which is this I and the number. In this case, it's me and hapless victims. We've got two viewers. And then over here, we have a button for seeing the next active unit that you need to use. In this case, you can see I have bases that I haven't built from, so it's going to have me, it's going to send me to those. If I had like an infantry I hadn't moved, it would send me over there. There's also a hotkey for this, which is E. If you press E, it will go to the next active unit. And then lastly, here we have the end turn button. Very important. Uh, and there's a confirmation window here. So if you accidentally click it, you will not immediately end your turn. You have to go over here and hit confirm so that you don't end your turn without doing anything like I would have done right here, which would have been pretty bad. That that wraps it up for the interface. I hope I hope that's very useful for every guy for, for everyone. And uh, I'll see you guys later.